touches the man of heart, the heart of man. And the God inclines to those to praise Him. And I greet every one of the brethren, brethren, and those who are visiting here with the peace of the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a great joy to be here once again. To be here, I like to say it, that it's a renewal, a blessing to be here seeing my brethren. In this moment, we're going to receive the food that comes from heaven, the Word of God. And I invite the church to stand up. We're going to open the Bible in the book of Luke. Gospel of Luke. Chapter 24, the last chapter of the book of Luke. We're going to read three verses of this chapter, 24 of Luke. Luke chapter 24, first verse. First verse that we're going to read in verse 16 that says the following. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And now verse 30 and 31. Now it came to pass that, that as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Lord, bless this night in which our hearts rejoices in being in your house. Bless your word, so that it may be this uh, uh, addition to our soul that removes sadness, that removes affliction, and allow us to say, as your servant said, I will praise the name of the Lord. I pray in us, our will will pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My beloved, for many times, not few times, pastors and ushers and deacons that came up to the pulpit in this church and all the uh, other of our churches have always said, we all have, all have always said that the Lord guides all things and the service that we are performing tonight in this place it's not only as a habit it's not because there are some rules there is a determined day for us to um, gather and praise the Lord we are here tonight praising our God because this is there's a desire of our soul is the desire of a redeemed soul a soul that have found their God has exalted their God as receiving the benefits from serving this God it has learned to love this this God and his word so every time that we come here with this objective of praising the name of the Lord and serving him and exalt him and praise his name he has something amazing for us as a word of comfort consolation salvation deliverance and cure transformation and blessings and change God operates all of those things in our life and tonight therefore it will not be different than so many other times when we came here because the God is the same the word is the same it never changed what changed is the revelation what God speaks what God reveals what he shows and that he does and operates in the midst of a people that has their eyes their ears uh, pay attention and they are so uh, prepared to receive everything that comes from him my brethren we have been doing like we have done every service we were gathered upstairs a group of servants and brethren and our concern was Lord service tonight what are you going to tell us what are you going to operate on us to whom are you going to speak so then God began to show through signs 
what he wanted to do tonight and what he's going to do because when God operates nobody can prevent it so then the Lord has shown that there was a group here this group that is here tonight but this group was divided it was a divided group and then you see it but Lord there's not nobody's divided here everybody's as have the same thought but the Lord was revealing that not everyone has had the same thoughts because God knows our thoughts and the word says that before the word comes out of our mouth God knows already because God reads our thoughts he searched our hearts and God knows who is here tonight why whoever came here to the service why they came here what they are seeking for what they desire God knows everything he makes uh, uh, the division appropriate division he placed everything in its own place we don't know everything for us everybody is equal we are all praising the name of the Lord singing the word uh, listening to the word but God in a very simple way he knows us in his spiritual vision so then God has shown here tonight we have two groups two groups one group that has learned uh, how to see how to listen to and how to believe and receive with joy what God has done but there is also another group inside of the church and evidently somebody may, might ask oh is it me am I to which group I belong but the Lord was revealing that there is another group a group that entered here tonight that hasn't already been able to reach revelation they have not been able to see what God wants to do and he's already doing but the Lord has shown that as we were singing a song that has been sang at that moment he began to operate in this group opening their eyes in order for them to see not only the exterior but also to feel in their interior because that's what God wants so that we may all be one soul, but one only body one faith alone one hope one adoration one body alone because God's going to take for himself to, to the eternity only one body He's not going to take a part of a body it's, it's going to leave one take with him only one body that love each other and forgive each other that follow the project of God and accept everything that he reveals my brethren that's what God wants to do and when God sh showed in this sign and also gave another spiritual sign you're showing a, a bunch of flowers that were in several phases of their existence there were flowers that were already mature they were beautiful there were other that were still green there was so there had not blossomed yet and it, it is showing also that there is divergence in this group of God wants to remove this so that God wants to make us all one in Christ and when God gave this spiritual signs and also the Lord has hi highlighted a man who is here tonight a man with self selfless purpose has all his projects and he's saying he's this is my project nobody uh, takes my project away the Lord is showing that the project is his there's a project of God in our lives and he's the one who changed our lives when God gave all those spiritual signs at that instant I made a prayer and I said Lord what what are we going to say to the church the church that seems to be a, a one body alone but a church that is going through diversions and even actions and, and the Lord sent me back to a, a distant time more than 2,000 years ago of course I was not alive but the God of yesterday is this, the, the same today the Lord that I serve was living at that time he brought me back to Jerusalem to a city that was very busy very crowded city divided a group was 
crying because they, they, they thought that they had lost their hope, which was Jesus. And there was another group that was rejoicing because their human objectives had been achieved when they brought Jesus, the Son of God, to the cross of Calvary. And at, at that instant, when the Lord brought me to Jerusalem, He brought me exactly to that moment, the moment of great sadness for a large crowd, the moment of the crucifixion of Jesus. And I saw the crucifixion. And the Lord would also told me that He was showing would show me what was going to happen afterwards and at that moment I began to understand what God wanted to tell us he gave us gave me an, an order so that God gave an order for all of those that followed him the disciples the apostles he said remain in Jerusalem until that from heaven you be uh, blessed with my power when my Holy Spirit comes upon you. That was the order. Remain in Jerusalem. Everyone heard. Everyone heard. In the same way that everyone is, is hearing tonight the word of God. Everyone heard. But not everyone accepted. Not everyone obeyed. There were amongst Jesus' disciples those that, those that walked with him. Those that stayed with him throughout his earthly ministry. They followed his suffering, suffer, uh, followed his pain and the, his deliverance, the cures, the wonders operated. They stayed with Jesus all this time. They heard his word, and that word remained in Jerusalem until you receive power from the Holy Spirit. So then that what Jesus that has said it. But a few said, that's all right. We love Jesus. It was great. The time that we spent with him, three years. We, we are originally from Emmaus. We left our family there. We left uh, our relatives there. We followed him for three years for the dusty uh, lands of Palestine, going up mountains, going down mountain near the Mediterranean River, Red Sea, the Palestine, the Galilee, all everywhere from north to south, south to north. Now it's over. Everything is over. That Jesus that we adore, that Jesus that we followed, that Jesus that called himself Lord of Lords, King of Kings, now he's dead. He's buried. He's in the tomb of Joseph Arabataya. So now he's buried. So now, what am I going to do here? If that Jesus that everybody deposited all their trust, they promised eternal life. He himself is in the tomb. And they they were saying this. Our solution is to go back home. There's no other resource. We're going to back home and begin. We start from the beginning. Forget about Jesus. Forget about resurrection. All the things that he said. Let's forget about this. Lazarus resurrected. The lame is now walking. The blind is seeing. The deaf is now listening. But now we need to go back home and thus they were going back home and thinking man what a sad thing disappointing thing now what what are we going to say when we go back home what is our wives what our wives are going to say and our children you came back i thought you were already in heaven where is the Gal galilean where is the nazarene where is him all the things was already happening in their minds as they were thinking. How, how about now? We're going to go back disappointed, frustrated, and, and on their way to Emmaus, suddenly appeared uh, a person on their way. Where that person came from? They, they were so... They were thinking about this, uh, this uh, their own concerns that they didn't even notice where that man came from. And that man came to them and said, What are you talking about? Is there some news? Where are you from? They said, Where? Who are you that don't know of all, all the events that happened in Jerusalem? Because we had, with, we have been with Jesus, the called 
just the one who was called the Son of God, who saw him operating miracles and wonders. And you, you don't know what happened? They crucified him. They took him out of the cross and put him in, on a tomb. You didn't know that? And Jesus answered, No, I didn't know of anything. Is it true? Really? And they said, Yes, he was a perfect man. He was a man of God that spoke of things of God that awoke in us hope and removed from us sadness, anguish, and gave us peace. He would say, My peace I give you, I don't give you like the world gives. And they went on having this conversation and talking to him. So then they began to speak of, about the world, about Jesus, his project, uh, the project of, of our arrival and rescue of the soul of people. So then they arrived in Amos. And Jesus, they didn't recognize him as being Jesus because, beloved, when man walks away from Jesus, the first thing infirmity that happens to him is blindness, is a spiritual blindness that also commits his own eyes. He no longer sees glory, he no, no longer sees power, he doesn't understand revelation, he doesn't even want to go to church anymore because he walked away from Jesus. So then when he, they came to Emmaus, it was already getting dark, they came to their homes and said, Jesus, we arrived. And Jesus said, uh, made the motions like he was going forward. And then they invited Jesus to enter. It's already night. It's dangerous for you to walk here alone. Maybe they were thinking that he was going to Jerusalem or for the Galilee or Judea. Or It's dangerous. Why don't you want to stay here? Be with us. Let's stay and here and eat. Um, something and then Jesus entered into that house and immediately nobody asked anything but when the woman saw them immediately the wives prepared a little food the bread they put it on on the table and they said eat it you are hungry they they you are hungry for, come from Jerusalem and also you spent three years uh, uh, walking in Jerusalem so then they put the food on the table Jesus said oh wait a minute Let's thank the Lord first, right? So when Jesus said this, he began to dip, to break the bread. Their eyes opened up, and then he saw the glorious image of Jesus, the person of the Lord Jesus there. They saw Jesus now glorified, the Jesus that had been risen from the dead, victorious, overcame death, and is now life tonight. But what happened, my beloved, when they realized that Jesus vanished. You know why? Because they saw that Jesus glorified. They just didn't see Jesus uh, all bloody or with a crown of thorns on his head or without clothing and blood. Uh, no, they saw Jesus perfect, glorified because he's the Son of God. Hallelujah. And there at this instant, there were two crowds, one that remained in Jerusalem in obedience, and there were two that left in their disobedience. They didn't accept it. But now they come, go back with rejoicing and say to one another, I knew I felt my heart burning when he was speaking, because when Jesus speaks to men, their heart burns with joy and pleasure, because Jesus is all of this for us. So now they run back to Jerusalem, and now there was one body alone, one church alone. And that's what Jesus wants to do tonight. We ask that if you entered here thinking all the things, think about Jesus, Jesus who is here, uh, the life Jesus, the Jesus that we can have pleasure to say, I will praise the Lord. The children sing, the brethren pray, the church glorified because our Jesus is alive. And he wants us to be uh, one body alone, uh, one church alone, one people alone, one only shepherd, one Lord alone. Because that's how it is going to be in eternity. We can tonight rest in the Lord Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to be part of the church that is being prepared 
for one day to be with you in eternity. This Jesus who is here, glorify Him now, praise Him now, because He wants to receive your adoration. Hallelujah. Let's praise the name of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glorify Jesus. Oh 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say this prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory to the name of the Lord. Tonight, my desire that everyone here to be unanimous in one body because God wants to take just one body not part of a body he wants to take one one body one whole body guided by the same faith with the same hope in the same night in the same way as in Amos at that day the bread was broken the living bread was broken so that the eyes would be open and the understanding could be reached to all of those that are here tonight you who entered here tonight naturally you may need a prayer a prayer the message you already heard nobody's going to preach for you anymore but if you tonight if you need a prayer one intercession have uh, ushers, deacons ready to pray for you as we're going to be here this instant we're going to pray to the Lord and after we're going to ask the praise group to be praising the name of the Lord softly as the ushers, deacons and pastors are going to be going towards you if you need don't leave this place without a prayer if you need don't leave this player this place without a prayer because Jesus is alive and he knows your necessities amen my brethren Lord God we praise you and give you honors and glorify you for this celebration for once again another night in your house for the privilege that we had and we have to praise your name to speak with you through prayer and to meditate and hear your word operate Lord in the heart of each one who are here tonight so that as they leave their door as they go back to their homes to their own daily lives but we we may remain as one only spirit waiting for the glorious and imminent arrival of your son Jesus this is the request that we say praising your name in the name of Jesus in your name father we say that a gr wonderful grace of your son Jesus the God the love the love of the Father your infinite love and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon your people your church of, of uh, the only body that you want now and forever amen I'd like to invite the church to sit down and just remain on your seats for a few minutes while all the ushers deacons and pastors are going to be giving assistance to those that need prayer now the ushers deacons and and pastors go and the church will be here in fellowship praying as the assistance is being given while in the moment in which the brethren are praying the Holy Spirit will be moving the Holy Spirit moves in fellowship so the brethren and after the assistance we're going to have a meeting with all the women of the church with Pastor Ronildo. So after the assistance, sister should not leave. No, the pastor wants a meeting with all the women. We're going to be in fellowship. As the assistance is being given there for the necessity out there. You can go. Glory to God. Amen. Já, já foi, já foi. Já foi.